the acting chair stunt double. All right. Don't so, let the power go to your head. Yeah, yeah. So welcome to the <laughs> Longmont Museum Advisory Board meeting, Wednesday, November 15th. I called this meeting to order at 430. Welcome all. Um, a roll call. I've got it. All right. All of them. Uh, public invited to be heard, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, I was aware of this meeting because of a lady that I, so I went, I went to the art and sit classes downstairs. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And one of the ladies, we started talking and she told me that she was gonna be here today. So I don't see her right now. <laughs> I forgot her first name though. And she told me about this and she told me how, how can I come here and talk to you guys. So here I am. Um, so first I'm David. And um, I'm, I'm a member of the museum, by the way. <laughs> My family is. And um, I'm also part of the Northern Northern Colorado Caledonia Pipe Band. You guys probably, that's a mouthful, by the way. That's a, just pretty much short for, I'm part of a pipe band that we practice here in Longmont. Um, every Sundays, we give free lessons for piping. You know, pipe, pipe, piping is just, the Highland bagpipes. You guys oh, right, know. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. right. Um, Scottish. 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 Yeah, Scottish and Irish heritage. Mm -hmm. And um, we also give drum lessons. Um, and right now, there's a church by, um, in Hover and 14th, around that area, that we, they host our rehearsals and lessons every Sundays at four o'clock. So my vision, I, I became part of the pipe band about a year ago. And I, I always thought that the, that this place, the museum, would be so awesome if we can do those activities here. You know, teaching classes for free to the community, by the way, and doing rehearsals. And part of that would be, you know, we could give also like um, a big show once a year. You guys are aware of what Burns Night is? Burns night, you know what it is? Okay, so we could host like a, a Burns night dinner. It, it could be a big thing that we can promote. I can also see that maybe one, you know how you guys have exhibitions in and out every six months or so? Mm -hmm. We could have an exhibition that um, is about Scottish and Irish heritage. And you know, Estes Park every year, they host like big Highland games. Oh, okay. And we can get them involved as well here. So. Me, being part of the pipe band, I can see the pipe band growing with this kind of um, setting because it would give us exposure, it would give us you know, more reach to the community. And we volunteer for teaching, you know, we want to promote the arts. Um, so I am here today just to, to, to tell you guys about this, but if you guys would entertain us to make a proposal. So, I am not one of the leaders of the of the band. There, I would have to get them involved in making a proposal. Mm -hmm. If you guys were interested in hearing about this, because I did not know at the, you know at first glance, I did not know if this was a feasible thing to do. You know how open mm -hmm. was this? If, if it's even possible, um, or if you guys would entertain the idea. If you guys are. Great, Les, I would like to make a, uh, a, a nice proposal with the leaders of the band and present to you guys, like, what do we need? You know, what? how can we give back? And how can, you know, how can we make this happen, pretty much? Um, that's all. <laughs> how many people in the band? Uh, over 20 something. Uh, I don't wow. know, like, not shy of 25. Well, Is that and like, you all play together. Yes, we were, we were going to do the long long parade, the Halloween parade, but it got so cold <laughs> that morning that our, our instruments, yeah, they don't, they don't do well in the, with the, with the cold, our reeds, you know, we have a reed instrument, mm -hmm. they just get shut down, so they, we cannot blow into the reed when it's that cold, um, so we have to cancel last minute, but um, if you go to the Highland Games, you can catch us there, you know, at this part. But anyways, I I do not know. <laughs> Here I am, right? Uh, requesting this, but all I want to do is like, if there's a follow up. First of all, if there could be a follow up to this conversation, who would that person be with? And then if we can set up like a meeting, you know, if that's the case, if that's the case, 
then who do we set? How do we set the meeting? It could be something next year or something. But the thing is, I want to get something going if there's a possibility. If there's none, then we can just set it that way. Okay, very good. David, did we get your contact information, phone number, email? Could you provide us we'll that? scribble that down for me. That'd be great. Um, yes. Well, I, I like the idea. I think it's I, great. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, it's our, exciting. Our, our spaces are, you know, they are available for rent. Mm. Um, so we don't typically do, you know, free uh, use by the community because mm. Uh, we have to be equitable in the community, so um, so if, if that's It would be nice to know how much it would cost yeah. to rent out, let's say, you know, if it's not free, then how much is it? And mm -hmm. then, if we can do some kind of a... Uh, well, he's, he's offering classes. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Classes. There's, a few, there's a few things to, right. to consider too, right, like this. So is, 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 if it's rent, if it's gonna be like, maybe half rent or a fourth rent or something, and then we can maybe do some kind of um, fundraising to pay for this. Um, but because, you know, we are a non-profit organization, mm -hmm. you know, just like you guys are. <laughs> so, and it's more to promote I don't know, the arts, you know, the arts, music and heritage. So, yeah, you might certainly, certainly, certainly glad to get your contact yes. info and, and get you in touch with uh, Folks that uh, schedule our spaces and, and uh, get you the rental information and all that. Yeah, the thing is, um, I can tell you because we have free space right now, which is a church. Mm -hmm. If there's rent, the leaders are gonna be like, "Why pay rent?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I can see the potential of you know I would pay the rent if I if there's means to. To collect funds, right? Uh -huh. I know right now you guys are shooting to raise like a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, and you're getting closer. Um, but I believe some some of the leaders in the band they're just like, well, why why get all this? You know, like we're find where we at. I don't see it that way. I see it that we want. I want to grow it. Right now, there's a generation of pipers that are above sixty. You know, we need to fill in the next generation of pipers coming in. And that's where the classes come in. You know, we want to bring that generation of pipers and drummers, you know, kids. Yes. Thank so, you, David. I appreciate you guys having me. So, is it okay? Should I stick around? Or no, you're okay welcome to, to, to stick around. around. Yes, you can. So, well, I would just like to say if he's offering classes, if they're offering classes free, then. You might want to consider that as an equitable bargain for the space in exchange for free classes to yeah. the community. It seems like a seems like a, a, a good bargain. Yeah. Stick around, you might actually end up on this floor. Oh my God. Montgomery, that's a Scottish name from the Highlands. That's so great. So, um, thank you for hearing me out. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys again. And, um, yeah, maybe one day on the top part of the board. I don't know how that goes up. Well, there's two, two vacancies. I live right there. Right I now. live right there. I live like five minutes away. Oh, okay. Hey, oh, well, part of the board. Two we vacancies. just segue right in. Yeah. Two vacancies. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe I see what this is all about. And talk then, to Joanne yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 You want to apply, yeah. talk to Joanne about it. Yeah. So thank you. Um, I'm going to ask for approval of the uh, September minutes. September 20th. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? I have a motion to approve. Any changes to the uh, to the minutes as, as reported? Did you get a chance to look those over? I have none. Second on that? We did. We got it. We seconded. Yeah. All right. And then I will ask for a motion. To approve the October meeting, which was a non-event. Do we have to move? To do? We do. We have to. We yes. have to do so, we do. Yeah, so, all right. Yeah. There's Linda, and I will second that. And um, any, there's no changes to it, so thank you. Do we want to technically vote on each one? Uh, yes, we could do that. You, did you want to vote on the September 
Report. Approved. Approved. Okay. And the October non report? Approved. Okay. Thank you. Technically done. Um, a session. All right. Here we go. These are the four donations that we are considering for the collection this month. This collection of papers were found in the walls of 1136th Avenue. And most interesting, I think, uh, is a booklet called The Rocky Mountain Lyceum that was published in 1895. And it is a it's an interesting advertisement of sorts of speakers and musicians and uh, performers that came through Longmont and the Front Range area uh, in 1895 to 1896. That's pretty, pretty fun. Um, there's also a milk bottle cardboard cap cardboard cap, not just the ring, um, which is actually kind of a find uh, for S. Shelley's uh, theory in my life. So those are those. And there are a few more vaguely indecipherable uh, letters that we will ask the volunteers. What are the letters about? That's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, uh, many of them have a to and a from, um, but I was not able to read them. Uh, we will work on that later. You know how to read script? Uh, slowly. And you weren't taught how to write script. I was taught how to write script. Were you? <laughs> okay. It's Congratulations. Not me that I can read that particular script. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those fun letters where they ran out of paper, so she turned the paper and it got uh, sideways. So yeah, writing. finding the <laughs> beginning and the middle and the end was a little bit of a challenge. Um, you know why it was hidden in the walls? Lots of times, papers, especially like a lyceum like this, um, were added to walls for heat for insulation. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so if you had scrap paper around it, mm -hmm. you had a drafty wall. Well, they didn't rip them up, they just preserved it. Just so the lyceum in particular is pretty um, water damaged and torn up, um, but the so it could have been either, um, huh. but it does, the, there's nothing salacious particularly in the letters. Um, so I, I, I think they're not like a trove of love letters or something that somebody was hiding. So, but I don't know. Maybe. The, the Lyceum, how many pages is that? Is it's a decent sized booklet. I would say probably about 20 pages or so. And most oh. of them have photographs, like the cover, this is the cover um, of the speaker where they were traveling from. Um, it, it seemed like a publication that was put on by like an agent who was representing um, the group. Are the letters dated? They are. Well, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Early 19th century or early 20th century? Pro yeah, early 20th century for sure. Um, they, but yeah, I'd have to look back. Um, uh -huh. Uh, so yes, somebody was renovating on Sixth Avenue and mm -hmm. found a batch of reinsulated. Oh uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cutting expenses. I'll do all four and then we can go. Um, Anne Denny is um, a frequent donor. Uh, she did a oral history. Um, interview of sorts with Dorothy Doherty and her son Doug. The Dohertys um, own, own uh, an opera, um, the Doherty Museum um, on 287. Mm -hmm. And the audio cassette is a recording of the interview and also it's kind of like a rip. Uh, she carried a tape recorder around the summer open house event that they had in 1995 um, at the Doherty Museum, um, which has a number of far, farm equipment and tractors and large machinery in the building. Uh, 
that Mr. Gordy collected. Lots of cars, guns, pianos. It's pretty interesting place. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. Uh, so it's an interesting snapshot of the Doherty family um, and the Doherty Lizard. This is the quilt that is on display downstairs. Um, this quilt was made in uh, 2014, um, a year after the 2013 flood by Boulder County residents commemorating the flood. Um, and commemorating the restoration projects. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hung in a Boulder County building atrium for since 2014. Um, and uh, we were interested in having uh, having it in uh, the display downstairs in Kaiser C. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to accession it after the display. Oh, and it came, sorry, and then the photograph on the left is a, um, a book that was produced that explains each quilt square. So each quilt square was made by a different quilter and has a corresponding page in the book that talks about why the design was picked and who got the quilting for it. should make postcards out of that. Oh, mm -hmm. that's not good. And sell them, yeah. It's very colorful, I like yeah, that. Kind of has, you know, meaning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very local and very, um, yeah. yeah, and a certain, it would be interesting to hear certain squares, certain squares have different stories about, mm -hmm. about right. the yeah. So that's a, that's a keeper. Uh, these are two photographs of Dakin ancestors, Albert Dakin and Jesse Stanton Dakin. Um, we are asking to accession digital scans of these photographs, so not this, actual, not the image that I took. Um, the originals will be returned to the donor uh, this weekend. Uh, the Dakin family was, the Albert and Jesse lived in Long Island, um in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, where, where, and raise their children. Where in Long Island? Excellent question. He had no, an art first. No. Jesse was the uh, librarian in Longmont. Um, oh. Librarian Longmont. That's right. Um, Albert was a lawyer <laughs> who actually worked in Lyons a good bit. Um, Uh, and Jesse was a Stanton, uh, the Stantons were a big league venture. Um, they, their family went on to uh, have a photography business in Greeley with their son. So, um, good, good, ex uh, good uh, addition to, to the collection uh, of early long life. And those, that's all for it. Anybody have any questions other than dates that I don't know? Do you have the rights to the, to the images? Ooh. Um, so the, if someone wanted to copy it, they would have the right to do that? Yeah, or you would have the right to do that? About mm -hmm. getting a, we've got language for living photographers where so we okay. can share. Um, they retain rights, but we also have have rights to um, That's a good point. Um, so the donor is their great grandson? Maybe a little, maybe only grandson. Um, grandson. Um, and he is an active photographer up in Estes Park. And, uh, I'm sorry. Hmm. That's a good point. Is the magnetic media, the cassette tape, is that transcribed to any other media? Or is Anne, it just in this format? Anne included a transcription of that paper oh, back in the photograph. Um, but I agree that we should get the audio off of the cassette um, before it falls apart. And then we would digitize it and I can. We do have a small digital collection here. 
um, which is where the stills would go to of the photographs um, that are uh, on the cloud and which have their camera with them. I have a question on this um, donated uh, media. Mm -hmm. Is it accessible to the public? We have um, a large collection and a lot <laughs> of it is available on our website through um, a, a, a database portal. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do research specifically or most successfully, I think, with the um, historic photographs. Um, so the, the date and scans um, would be quick and easy to get up. So they, but like, people can visit the, the archives also, to look yeah. at the physical. Yeah, I want to check out the, I'm a software developer. That's my like, profession. Mm -hmm. I do the piping as a hobby. Um, but I would like to see this program because I love history and um, I think oh. I would do another puzzle in the future. If I, if I don't like this program, I want to make it better. Okay. Uh, what was no, it first? Uh, we are always looking for volunteers. Um, if you'd like to get uh, started, we can you know, start cataloging and um, take, a, take a look at the program. Sure. Yeah, we'll definitely want to take a look at it. Uh, sure. yeah. Do we vote on the sessions? As a group or individually? As a group. As a group. As a group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I have any further discussion regarding those? Well, on the transcript, again, do you have the the rights to those so people can quote from it without? There aren't the same, yes, um, there's not the same. Um, they are all oral history has its own. Yeah. So the, the audio. Did, uh, release form on mm -hmm. the apologies. So the audio would be Is she still she, alive? She is. Mm -hmm. You just get but a I simple don't think she would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just get a simple uh, statement. Or if you don't have a if you don't have a formal release document, maybe that's something you want to We do we do currently um, if Anoka is if Eric or I were just send her informal emails. Say, do you mind if we? Do you mind if I use this? Yeah. 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 No. Do you mind if the museum can make this? Yeah. You know, publicly accessible. Yeah. And I'm sure that was her and intention. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. But having so you just have you so you just have it. Other comments? Oh, does someone? Wish to make a motion to acquire these accessions. Bruce? Yes. Second? Right. Linda? Uh, all in favor? Unanimously. Very good. We'll move on to reports. Uh, report of the director. Okay. Well, you have the full written report. Um, I will hit a few highlights. Under administration, uh, if you want, after our meeting is done, you can check out our new office area, which is just about done uh, in what was our old uh, textile storage area. If any of you saw that uh, room, you won't recognize it now. Uh, it's really looking nice. Um, and that will allow us to move seven staff members over in that area, uh, make it so that we're not all doubled up on cubicles in here. Uh, Send the time out uh, section of the museum. <laughs> and there is a little room that's like, yeah, this will be yeah. perfect for time out. Uh, uh, under exhibits, uh, I will just mention our two upcoming exhibits. Uh, Picturing the West uh, will open up uh, January 26th, 2024. Uh, black and white 19th century photography um, and uh, one thing that makes it uh, unusual uh, so it's a traveling exhibit normally with traveling exhibits we you know bring them in put them up on the wall don't really do much but um, when we were first looking at this exhibit it was pointed out that all of the photographers in the exhibit are white males and we started thinking about, well, 
I'm guessing there were other photographers operating in the 19th century, and uh, so um, um, one of our museum assistants, as well as Eileen, uh, have worked to find examples of uh, photography by women, people of color, and so we are adding that in a sort of interior section of the gallery we're calling Reframing the West. Um, so you'll see the, the full uh, exhibit uh, as the Crowding exhibit with very well-known names and then these uh, lesser known but still really powerful uh, images from uh, uh, other 19th century and 20th century photography. Then coming up in the summer, we are bringing back one of our most popular exhibits ever, uh, our Lego exhibit from 10 years ago. Um, so uh, this year we're calling it Build, Design and Create with Lego. That will open up June 1st. And um, that it will have both uh, Lego creations uh, created by local Lego builders who are you know, real artists in their own right as well as uh, a lot of hands-on activities uh, geared kind of around engineering on this one. So um, building with bridges, building the tallest tower and seeing how it you know, can survive an earthquake and things like that. So uh, we're hoping this will be a great sort of introduction to hands-on kids exhibits again at the museum as we prepare to open up our children's gallery the third time. Uh, we're excited about that. Um, we'll skip down to education. Uh, I will just mention Day of the Dead. Um, we had another huge success with our Day of the Dead uh, exhibit and celebration. Uh, the event day on October 14th, 5,411 people in downtown Longmont. That same day, 500 visitors here at the museum um, and uh, almost 300 riding the trolley back and forth. Um, the exhibit uh, of altars uh, was up for a month in our atrium. Uh, don't have final numbers on how many people uh, visited that, but uh, certainly more than a thousand came to that. So always a great event. This is our 23rd year of doing day to day. Under collections, I will highlight that we have hired a new curator of history, Elizabeth Bogland. She'll start uh, next Monday. Um, so she'll be uh, replacing me as curator of history uh, and uh, working uh, to uh, develop and diversify our collection, which is one of the things I want to make sure that we do is uh, have our collection represent uh, the full breadth of Longmont's diversity. Uh, and then the last thing I think I will highlight is under our capital campaign and development. Um, so as of 11-6, we had raised um, 6,559. Uh, we've raised about another 5,000 over the last uh, uh, week or so. So we are slowly but surely getting there. And uh, had some big news last night. Mm -hmm. uh, the Stewart Family Foundation, uh, which has already com uh, committed a $5 million pledge, has now said on top of that, that they will match all donations given to our capital campaign through the end of the year um, up to a total of $100,000. Um, so it's a great opportunity if you haven't given to the capital campaign. Uh, one of the things that, uh, as we're talking to foundations, they ask, has your entire board supported the campaign? Um, we were just meeting with the Gates Family Foundation a few weeks ago, and, and they, they asked that. And, um, so you know, it's, it's really important that, um, if at all possible, it doesn't have to be a large contribution. But, if every board member can make a contribution, and now that will be matched dollar for dollar by the Stewart Family Foundation. So, um, uh, great news on that front. Um, that uh, our campaign is moving ahead. Um, that uh, I think is where I will leave off on highlights. But if anyone has any questions about anything I talked about or any of the other 
things in the director's report. I have a question. Under capital campaign, it says that we raised six million five hundred and fifty-nine thousand. Four hundred and twenty-five. Is that a typo? Uh, no, that is correct. That is correct. Sorry, that, okay. If I said another number, I, I misspoke. Uh, so we're now at Wonderful. six million five hundred and sixty-three thousand two hundred and seventy-five mm -hmm. as of uh, when I checked on the computer before this meeting. Mm -hmm. Very good. Other questions? Hearing none, uh, there's no report from the chair, is there? Is something sent in? So we'll move on to unfinished business. We have any unfinished business. Well, all right, then we'll move on to new business. So the main item under new business is our 2024-2029 plan. Uh, this plan was developed uh, by museum leadership team uh, working with the assistant city manager Sandy Cedar. Uh, we had basically a day-long retreat where Sandy, who has done this for groups throughout the city, uh, took us through a whole process to develop a strategic plan. Um, so we did a lot of uh, putting things up on the board about basically what she posed to us was it's five years from now 2029 the plan is complete what are you talking about at the end of year party and those are the kind of things that then we turned into the goals that we have in this document so we have six different sections within the document um, and then uh, under each section, we have a series of kind of the long-term five-year goals with the heading in 2029. And then below that, we have immediate action steps. So these were elements that then toward the end of the day, we looked at uh, everything we'd come up with and we started talking about, mm. these are the things we want to address first. These are the highest priorities. Um, and our thought is that this plan will certainly Evolve. We will be regularly revisiting it um, as a as a museum staff, and probably will be bringing back annual uh, updates to this board about how it's going. Uh, I also want to note that you know right now it's kind of in a just text form, not that exciting. Uh, our plan is once it is adopted, then we'll turn it over to uh, Jared and Brack or our designers and have it designed with some cool graphics and things like that. So it's really something we can be handing out to funders and, and showing, you know, this is, uh, this is a plan that's, that's very much tied in with, you know, the broader city goals and, and uh, also very much thinking about, you know, our, our next five years are uh, strongly going to be focused on expanding and then, you know, living into that expansion. And that's what a lot of the things that we're talking So is the museum considering uh, managing the Callahan House and uh, the, so, the visitor um, center at the Sandstone Ranch? Those are currently under recreation and recreation and the museum are both under the same division, which is headed by uh, Jeff Friesner. And Jeff was at our um, uh, strategic planning meeting and he was the one that raised those. He said, you know, it's something we need to discuss. We need to decide really as a department, does it make sense for those to be under recreation or under the museum? Do you so, get staff with that? Know, that's some discussions we would have to have in terms of, you know, can the museum support those? Do we have the capacity? Is there you know, no, you funding need, that comes you along staff. with you that? Need you need staff. Um, yeah. uh, right now, Callahan House is largely self-funded. Mm -hmm. It's a rental space. Um, and so it's the one that probably makes the most sense because we are a rental space, they are a rental space. Um, it's, you know, a historic house with a whole lot of history that we've worked very closely with. Does that have a staff? Our board. There's one staff member. Just one person. Um, yeah. And, and there's a board. And, and then there's also a, a, a board. And they raise board. money. 
Um, not so much money, but it's the income from rentals. Rental right? space. Um, so it's well, how do they weddings. Maintain, how do they maintain yeah. the uh, by rental fees? They maintain yeah. the facility. Well, and then there's grants. grants. Yeah, right. they write a lot of grants for that. Uh, so this one person writes grants. And uh, or sometimes I think Rex yeah, uh, wrote the last. Uh, yeah, I thought there was another person involved. Um, but they're the kind of grants that we've written in the past to say historical fund grants. So, you know, it's it's certainly a discussion we need to have with recreation. Um, but it was one of the things that uh, Jeff felt like this is a discussion we need to have. We should take it with uh, you know, one or two staff that wouldn't give you. <laughs> one, you know, one person. One person is, uh, you know, a little overburdened. So, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll take it with a couple of staff. Give me a couple of staff. Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So it's, a, it's a bargain. You're bargaining. So. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the visitor center. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that one, yeah. that one's further away. A little bit harder to, to connect to. It's it's been a challenging facility, I think, for the city to try and figure out. If, if you're not familiar with it, you know it's um, on Highway 119, uh, uh, and it is adjacent to some of the ball fields, but actually kind of hard to get to the Sandstorm Ranch ball yeah. fields and so yeah. forth. So um, it's currently open very limited hours, uh, mostly in the summer. Um, so that one is, I think, a, a more of a challenge for us to take on to, to do anything more with it than the rest of them. What's a land, a land swap? So in the parking lot. for at least 10 years, um, so right now uh, the city owns a narrow strip of land going all the way to Main Street along Coyle. Uh, it's about a 50 foot wide strip of land that came with the donation of um, the land that became the Quail Campus. Um, and then a private developer owns the land next to it that actually comes just about almost to um, the uh, edge of our parking lot. It's maybe 15 feet or so from our parking lot. Wow. Um, so for a long time, there's been discussion about the developer would have a lot more use of that corner um, at Main and Quail, and we would really like to have a little more breathing room um, uh, to expand our parking lot. Um, developers have come with plans, and and even and probably about ten years ago, presented to this board and said, "Oh yes, going forward, mm -hmm. won't be long now. You'll see this." And the city basically requires, as part of that development, that that land swap happens. So uh, the developer would get some of that land at the corner of Main and Quail. Uh, we would get, or the city would get land um, adjacent to uh, the existing park. Now. Um, it it has not ever come to fruition, and so um, that's that's something we don't really control. But it's just one of those things that. Hopefully in the next five years it will happen. And well, it sounds like a very successful program. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really outside. Uh, developers at bay. Well done. Well done. So it's you know, outside of our control to some extent, but um, it, it was in the you know list of things we thought you know in five years it would be great to have that done and be able to expand. questions okay I have a question um, under the growing audience I, I, I was struck by this uh, historically excluded groups have a sense of ownership in the museum you want to speak to that who those so um, there's a lot of different terminology what what people might have once called minorities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the sense now is that that term is is kind of a, a derogatory term in some ways. Yes. Sort of sense. So we use historically excluded to kind of call out that, you know, groups like Latinos and uh, blacks and so forth 
have at times been excluded uh, by our culture. Okay. Um, so that is what that means. It's kind of a, a very broad umbrella term. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, doesn't mean that the museum has ever <laughs> excluded them necessarily, <laughs> but uh, in our broader culture. That includes the Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bagpipe. Yes. I'm not Scottish, though. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions uh, about, uh, regarding the strategic plan? Uh, how, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, how set in stone is the five year plan? I mean, five year plans. <laughs> it's you know um, yes I know it, it's aspiration right yeah it, it, it is I think we uh, the last plan by the time we actually got the thing adopted and through everything we were two years into it and it seemed like we had a year to finish it so right. we wanted to give ourselves a little more leeway of, yeah. it, um, uh, it, it's sort of on the line of uh, the uh, envision long month mm -hmm. yes we're yeah. setting goals um, so, if, if the board is, is willing, I would ask uh, if we uh, move to adopt it so we can uh, um, move ahead and then have it you know, officially adopted plan. I'll make the motion to adopt the strategic plan as, uh, as outlined. Second. All in favor? All four of us. Great. All right. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Who, who's who's going to be the next that uh, drops off the cliff? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, congratulations. Thank you. So, was there a discussion about hybrid meetings? So this uh, came up, I think, in some email exchanges yeah. um, over the last month since we had to uh, cancel the October meeting due to lack of quorum, um, whether there um, would be uh, more attendance if we had hybrid meetings. I will say, having attended other uh, boards that have had hybrid meetings, I personally don't find them to be all that effective from the standpoint of the person who is not in the room. It's just difficult for them to contribute. Um, uh, we have this you know, fancy new owl yes, camera, yeah. which, which helps, but it, it's still hard for someone who is not in a room to really uh, understand the flow of things. Uh, but you know, it was raised. Uh, didn't want to get a sense of whether the board feels like that's a direction. Uh, I'm not in favor of them no, personally. Not, in so. no, not unless we have to go back to the COVID thing. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, they can make the effort to show up. Yeah. 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 And I think so. That was an exchange that we I had with you and Tom. Mm -hmm. And so, the library, our library advisory board, does use the hybrid. Um, I think the setup of the room plays a role because I. <coughs> I'm a teacher, so I taught hybrid for a year and a half. And you <laughs> it was survived. Painful, and, and I did survived. survive. Yeah, half my class in front of me and the other half online. I was like, I'm triggered right now. Um, so anyways, um, I sat on both. So there's been situations where I've had to join virtually. And you're right, it is, it is a little challenging. We have one member um, who for the time being, cannot join us personally. Mm -hmm. So that's, we made that accommodation to include her online. So that was the only reason why I brought that up. So in the event, if we have somebody who does, so, mm -hmm. you know, we recently lost somebody because of health mm -hmm. concerns, but if it opens up that opportunity for people to participate, but they might be homebound, um, you know, that it builds that, you know, that accessibility piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we can be flexible. So, yeah. you know, that was the only reason why I mentioned that. And then it allows us to, to keep 
corn. Mm -hmm. um, but what was the number for the minimum required to have a meeting? What's the minimum? Uh, right now we have seven board members, so a minimum is four. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 We just made it. Just we made it. Okay. Do we need a vote on that, or we just I, wanted to? I, I think I just I wanted to see what the board's sense was, um, and obviously we can certainly revisit yeah. it if our uh, member is, is not yeah. you know, able to attend uh, for for health reasons, mm -hmm. um, and that does uh, make me think um, if after the meeting I will I will grab a card. Uh, I think you all got the email from Dale Bernard. Yeah, yes. He, uh, has uh, resigned for health reasons and, mm -hmm. and if folks are willing to sign a, a card for her. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be nice. Uh, she's been on the board uh, quite a long time. Uh, very, very active. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the board. What do I need to do? Um, <laughs> it is. Yeah, you know what? You, you are. And let me know. They'll start recruiting for. Um, in the new year, so I'll, I'll get you all those dates. Yeah, thank you. Because yeah. that's that's what we and struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. What, is the, what is the purpose of the board? Just to give. What is the purpose of the main purpose of the board? Um, so they are uh, an advisory board to the museum um, and to city council. City council. Yeah. Um, so for the museum, they are the one who are authorized, as you saw in this meeting, to approve all donations to the museum collection. They also approve major policy documents like our uh, strategic plan. What, is um, the what are the qualifications of a board member? Let's see, you need to be a registered voter and within the city of Longmont. Um, so you have to live within the city and be a registered voter. Yeah. I already checked, that's easy. Cool. All right. <laughs> I've been four, four, four years we're, here. We're the, uh, we're the power center. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am very interested. If, if it's a possibility for me to, to do whatever it takes to, to get on the... Awesome. That's great. Yeah. 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 We need that. Yeah. 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 membership. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you were sick of it. You too sick of it all. But I am very ambitious, though. Yeah. So I'm going to to push my own in the, I mean, not my own in the, but like, yeah. that's all right. No, that's right. okay. <laughs> yes, that's all right. Or, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I get contagious, contagious with this stuff, right? So I love this. So. It's good. I want to be a part of it. Yeah. We're not puppets of Eric. Who was the person who, they said something about one person I know, Dale, but and one Pendy. What, what was that all about? Um, yeah. Katie McDonald has also. She will not be able to attend the next three meetings, um, and her term is then up in uh, June. Um, so uh, she has said, you know, if it, if it makes sense that, that she would be. Is she the chair? Uh, no. no. Uh, uh, Callie, uh, Callie uh, Porter, okay. the chair. So. Um, I, I'd like to meet with Katie and just, just talk with her a little bit more about that. But um, we may, you know, it, it may make sense for her to uh, uh, move on as well. Unfortunately, uh, she's still very involved in other aspects of the museum. Uh, I, uh, I think at some point it's not included in the strategic plan. It's too late because we voted on it. <laughs> <laughs> But I really think at some point in the future, whenever, uh, we need a digital archivist. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the days, a, digital a digital archivist, someone who can collect digital historical media of all sorts, whether it's you know uh, outdated uh, uh, floppy disks, or, you, know, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That needs to be. Um, Preserve and transfer and everything else. I think that would be a real interesting addition that we could put to use that position to put that position to use in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. like digital curation and exhibits, digital exhibits, all kinds of stuff. Yes, we have there's one very large digital collection that 
and we really haven't tapped at all the Times Calls mm. photo oh, archive oh, from yes, 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 about yes. 2005 yes. to 2010 yeah. or whenever. And if you collect the, uh, the, the, the media of photographers now, I mean, it's all, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's all yeah. digital now. They, they Everything's all yeah. digital. Yeah. So you need, you need a digital, mm -hmm. anyway. I think I was saying that when I was on the board before, <laughs> before a decade ago. But you know, there are lots of things there. Would that be would that then be a part of the collections committee? Probably, yeah. That, that so you have to really think about how to it. You know, it's we have we have a lot of challenges in the next few years as far as uh, making sure that our expansion is staffed. Um, you know, yeah. we're going to hire more uh, more exhibit staff. Um, Test and a lot of things. So, uh, one thing that is on the strategic plan is prioritizing staff. And so, that's going to be a, a conversation that, that we'll, we'll be having in, in the coming months. Um, is uh, looking at all of our staff needs and starting to prioritize and then making the case uh, for those, both the city council and also um, you know, finding hopefully ways to more earned revenue and less uh, December meetings so traditionally this board has canceled the December advisory board meeting since it usually falls fairly close to Christmas time um, um, so uh, unless there's folks that are really raring to have a meeting on December 20th. Um, I, I know we will we're usually be pretty short uh, handed on that meeting anyway. I will be out of town in January. Yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm glad to be here December. Well, you can show up in December. I could. I'll be yeah. <laughs> <I'll be rushing laughs> <this one. laughs> Okay. Um, do we need a vote on the December no, meeting? We would yeah. need to vote well, if to cancel the meeting or yeah, if yeah. we continue to have it. Then, you know, All right, uh, I'll open that to the floor. I move that we cancel the December meeting. Uh, do you have a second? Third? Well, I'll make it unanimous. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, comments from board members? Hearing none, I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Well done. Second. Is that a second, Bruce? Yes, second. All right. Well done. Yes. Go grab a, a card and sign that for Dale. Yeah. We're going to go check out your new.